walking go. past here during the farmer's carries was the worst thing I've ever had to do in my life. Yeah, and then the second pass was worse. At the beginning of the year, I set a goal for myself to get back in the gym. But I knew I didn't want to do the same old weightlifting things that I had done in the past. So I did some research and I found this place called Top Fuel, which is a local CrossFit gym. And let me tell you, it has been the most difficult, challenging, physical workouts I've ever been a part of in my entire life. And it's not just because I'm 40 years old. I mean, the people that work out there are crazy strong. It's like they're professional athletes or something. And then there's me. Well, the other day before class started, the owner said, man, it would be really cool if we did an egg burrito day. I do everything in my power to sort of stay under the radar. I don't tell too many people what I do in person that I don't know. Well, clearly the cat's out of the bag because they all turned and looked at me and said, yeah, we should do an egg burrito day. Okay, okay, fine, I'll do it, I'll do it. Here's the hard part though. I'm trying to feed 40 plus people. I have a little griddle, it's on location, it's early in the morning. So the prep has got to be locked in from top to bottom. I mean, buttoned up big time. So I'm gonna try to do everything I can to prep everything today so I can get ready for a super early morning tomorrow. I'm gonna walk you through what I'm gonna attempt to do. Sound good? Let's cook. Now, one of the most difficult things to figure when you're feeding a large amount of people is how much of each thing per person. Now, I'm gonna load up this egg burrito with salsa, guacamole, potatoes, eggs, and then I wanna do some sausage. So I'm gonna figure about two ounces per burrito. That should be plenty of that protein. Now, I've got some fresh ground pork that my local butcher hooked up. You can actually ask a butcher to do that. And of course, if you wanna see how I did it, I've got a bangers video or even Italian sausage. But what we're gonna do is load it up with a few fresh ingredients and try it out and make sure it's delicious enough to serve up in the burrito. So along with this ground pork, I wanna add some spices to it. Begin with some paprika, some crushed red pepper flakes, a little bit of brown sugar. Then I'm gonna ground in some fresh nutmeg, a few garlic cloves. And then at this stage, I'm gonna add in some herbs. So I really like using fresh sage and fresh thyme, just removing the sage from the stems. And I'm gonna get a fine mince. Now my guess is you could absolutely substitute in dry herbs if that's all you have. Now what I wanna do is just season it up with salt and pepper and mix everything together until it's completely combined. And when it comes to sausage, chorizo is also a great option. And I thought about that, but I don't know anything about these folks and what they like. And it's not a restaurant where they can just pick and choose what they want. So I'm going to proceed cautiously, go with the protein everyone loves, homemade breakfast sausage. But now that everything is mixed together, because I want to get the seasoning right, I'm going to taste a little bit by frying it up, see if we need to add anything else. I've got a quick nonstick skillet with oil, just gonna add in that little sausage bit. I'm gonna give it a quick flip and just cook it for a minute or two on each side and then try it. It's delicious, we're good to go. Let's cook this whole thing. So in a large rondeau pan with olive oil over high heat, I'm gonna add in this big old chunk of sausage and then immediately start to break it up with a spoon to get it into smaller bite-sized pieces. Once it is cooked through and brown, I need to cool it immediately and chill it down. The best way I know how to do that is transfer it to a sheet tray line with parchment paper, flatten it out to a thin layer, and then immediately chill it in the refrigerator. And now for the pan fried potatoes, I'm using Yukons. I wanna figure about a half potato per person in this burrito. What I wanna do is just cut these down to smaller cube sized pieces that are about a half inch by a half inch. You gotta remember, this needs to be bite sized to fit in the burrito and not overload it. So in a cast iron skillet with some olive oil on high heat when it's smoking, I'm gonna add in the potatoes in a single layer, season it with salt and let it sit there for four to five minutes, don't touch it. Then come back and flip things around every two minutes or so until they're golden brown and cooked throughout. I'm gonna do one last seasoning with salt and pepper, give it a shot, make sure they're tasty. Then the exact same way as a sausage, put them on a sheet tray line with parchment paper and in the fridge. Now outside of the eggs, the hearty base is just about finished. I've done the prep for the potatoes and the sausage. I've taken them as far as they can. Now I wanna do a few toppings like salsa and guac. Well, for a million apparently. Starting with removing the seeds from the avocado, I'm gonna figure about two to three tablespoons of guacamole per person. Then I'm just gonna scoop out all the goodness in the inside away from the peel, hit it with some lemon juice while all in a bowl, then mash it until mostly smooth with a few chunks. Then I'm gonna quickly small dice an onion, remove the pith and the seeds from a jalapeno or serrano, dice it up and add that to the bowl. Then I'm gonna remove the seeds from a tomato so it doesn't waterlog my guacamole. I'm gonna add that to the bowl along with some cilantro, 
Then what I'm gonna do is hit it with my secret ingredient, ground cumin, season it with salt and pepper. I'm gonna mix it until it is combined. Taste it, adjust any seasonings with lime juice, lemon juice. I think I'm good to go. And I'm gonna transfer it over to a container. Now, because I'm prepping up everything today for tomorrow, if you know anything about guacamole, it'll be brown. So I've got a little workaround that's really great. I'm just gonna knock this as flat as possible. Okay, great. Then I'm gonna put some clean acid on top, like lemon juice. That's gonna create a barrier so that the oxidation doesn't come into the guacamole and turn it brown. By tomorrow, I'll just mix in the lemon juice, adjust the seasonings, and it'll be good to go. Just squeezing in the lemon juice to make a nice thin layer on top covering it completely in the refrigerator to store it. And now for the pico, I'm gonna also figure about two to three tablespoons of this salsa per person. So just fillet it out, remove the seed so it doesn't get waterlogged, medium dice, add it to a container. Then I'm gonna small dice up a yellow onion, add it to its own container along with the jalapeno. Then finally, I'm gonna mince up some fresh cilantro, always using the stem, so much flavor. Now to make sure they're not overly waterlogged, I'm gonna put a little piece of paper towel on the bottom before storing it. So in a pico, you obviously put some acid in there and that's gonna break down the tomatoes. And then by tomorrow, I'm gonna have mush. That's not what I want. It's okay for the guacamole, for the pico. I want all the vegetables to be nice and crisp. So tomorrow, we'll just mix it up with a little lemon juice, lime juice, salt and pepper. We'll do it right on the spot. All right, a couple more things until this prep's almost finished. I grated up some Oaxaca and Chihuahua cheese, which I'm going to store. I'm figuring about a quarter cup of cheese per person. And then for the eggs, I'm going to do two large eggs per burrito. This should be plenty. Then once they're in this container, I'm going to use an immersion blender just to blend it. I'm guessing you could use a blender too. Should be totally fine. Now I'm going to set this to the side. I also want some beans. I'm going to figure about a quarter cup of beans per burrito. We're going to store that. Then I'm going to store the potatoes once they're cool. And then finally the sausage once it's cool in a completely separate container. Ooh, doggy. That was some prep. It's been a minute since I've prepped that much, especially for over 40 people. And the mise en place in this is just so important. Just making sure everything is in its place, everything is done, because when it comes time to cook, there's no stopping to dice, cut, or anything like that. You cook and you assemble, and that's it. And that's part of those basic fundamental techniques that I always preach about, having your mise en place done so it's ready to roll. Very, very important. So I'm tired. I'm real tired. I have to get up super early, so I'll catch you in the a.m. It's early. It's 5.45 a.m. I just got out of the shower. I'm heading over to the studio. I need to pick up all the food. And this is exactly why I prepped it the day before. So all I have to do today is heat it up. I wasn't about to get up at 2 a.m. and start prepping up everything. Plus, I also need to grab some ice so I can keep all the food cool while I cook it. I'm all set up, need to make that pico. I'm adding in the tomatoes, the onions, the jalapenos. Next, the cilantro into a large bowl. I'm gonna add in some lime juice and lemon juice. I love the combination of both. Lemon makes it really bright in flavor. Once I've squeezed everything in there, now I just need to quickly season it with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. I'm gonna try it, make sure it's delicious. Yep, it is dang tasty. So I'm good to start on this burrito. I'm gonna add some oil to my griddle, add on about a half cup of the potatoes. Next, a quarter cup or so of the sausage a quarter cup of the beans. And I'm just gonna cook these for two to three minutes, bring them up to temperature, separately adding the eggs to the other side of the griddle, season it with salt. They will cook almost immediately if you're using this griddle. Combine everything together. Then I'm gonna add down that burrito shell just to get it nice and warm on both sides. I'm gonna scoop it, add it to the center, add in a little cheese, some guacamole, some of that pico de gallo. And then I'm gonna do my best Chipotle employee impression and roll this thing up super tight. I'm gonna hit it in foil and make sure it stays really warm. Then let's see what's in the inside. Now that's how you make one. Now we need to multiply that times 40. Now my goal is to keep everything warm and heated. So all I'm doing is assembling at the end. So first I'm gonna throw down some burrito shells and try to keep them warm in some foil. I believe I can make six burritos at a time and wrap them up in foil and keep them warm while I make six more and repeat the process until everyone's fit. One thing that I learned that's an awesome trick, especially when working on a griddle, is when things need to cook a little bit quicker and you can add some moistness, a little bit of water goes a long way. It sort of steam roasts when you do that. It's funny, I always kind of think to myself, like, can I actually still do this? I've worked in the restaurant industry in over a decade. 
Do not work at any time. Come on. My one short. It's freaking massive. Can you re wrap it? I've had a few hiccups here, and it's definitely getting towards crunch time. These people are hungry, and I've got to get them fed. My name's Dustin Sherlow. I'm the uh, owner and head coach here at Top Field CrossFit. It, it's my running joke. Every time uh, somebody walks in, I'll, I'll ask them if they have an extra breakfast burrito. So today, my dreams kind of came true. We are a gym focused on functional fitness, uh, just trying to make people of all ages fit. And I'll totally come clean and I'll absolutely admit yeah. it. I am hands down the weakest person in this gym. I promise I'm getting there with a little help from some friends. All right, just pulled it off. Everyone's got a burrito, but the most important part, let's see what the verdict is. Beautiful. Enjoy it. Yeah, okay. Is that a problem? We're not moving. Mm. That's good. It's a five days, we'll there see. You know. I can still barely move. Oh my god. I'm just gonna take that. A burrito, egg burritos. All right. Mmm, that's good. Mexican approved. Walking go. past here during the farmer's carries was the worst thing I've ever had to do in my life. The initial, the first pass, you get a big whiff of it and you're yeah. like, oh man. And then the second pass was worse. And then the, it just kept getting fresher. <laughs> so much fun. I have not done anything like this in years. Doesn't mean I'm gonna continue to do it. But if you like this, definitely check out how I cook 60 racks of ribs over an open pit. That video is awesome. I'll see you on there.